If you want to learn Portuguese, welcome to the time of your life. Portuguese has many personalities, and if you do it right, it's an absolute thrill ride. But is Portuguese hard to learn? Let's find out. You probably know that there are two main versions of Portuguese. There's European Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. You might even have a favorite. But whatever you do, let's just get one thing out of the way. Gente, no Brasil, não se fala espanhol. Então, por favor, não vá ao Brasil achando que você vai conseguir se comunicar em espanhol. A maioria dos brasileiros considera isso ofensivo. You have been warned. Era uma vez um animal que não era nada normal. Uma zebra com todas as listras na horizontal. Would you believe me if I told you that you already know 5,000 Portuguese words and you only need about 1,000 words to be able to have really good conversations? So feel free to come back and practice these. But don't get too excited yet. Just because you have this doesn't mean you can do this. And those 5,000 words need a ton of skills to go with them. Portuguese grammar can be tricky to start with, but the fundamentals are actually fairly easy. Word order is usually the same as English, subject, verb, object, and there are simple things like you can leave out the subject pronoun if it's clear who you are talking about. See that? The subject is implied. But there are a few things that can trip you up when you're a beginner. For one thing, some words are a little harder to spell because unlike Spanish and Italian, Portuguese is not phonetic. It's a bit like French in that way. There are letters that don't sound exactly the way that you write them. And so you're definitely going to have to learn how certain combinations of letters are pronounced. Crazy pronunciations coming up later. Second, you'll bump into quite a few false friends you were trying to avoid. See a word here that looks friendly? What do you think it means? Well, if someone tells you, você deve ser educado, they're not saying you must be educated. They're saying that you have to be polite. But you're always polite, aren't you? I know you are. Here's a little quirk that I like, especially seen in Portugal. If you write, my name is, in Portuguese, you have to say, I call myself, I call myself, Ollie. But see this hyphen? Well, when you're talking about an action done to yourself or any action ending in selves or each other, you connect the action to the person with a hyphen. And if you leave out the hyphen, it means something different. So that is kind of fun. And these little features are not hard when you realize that they make you remember things. There's one rare Portuguese feature coming up later that you won't find in your Spanish, Italian, or French classes as well. Like all Romance languages, every noun in Portuguese has a gender. It is either masculine or it's feminine. But if you speak another Romance language, that doesn't mean you know the gender of Portuguese things. They are not always the same. But then you find out that in Portuguese, if someone lives in China, essa pessoa mora na China. But if someone lives in Canada, essa pessoa mora no Canadá. The general rule with Portuguese is that feminine nouns end in A and masculine nouns end in O, but there are a few exceptions such as tribo, which is feminine. There you go. It is important to learn these early on because the nouns gender also affects other words in the sentence. So once you have the gender of the noun, you need to match the adjectives and articles to that gender. And let's not forget about making plurals. Some are super easy, like English and Spanish. Does it end in a vowel? Yeah, well, just add an S to the end. Most plural words will get simple S or ES endings. But Portuguese is harder than Spanish and it has a variety of plurals. Words that end in um are especially tricky because there are three possible endings and the rules can be vague. So it takes a bit of practice, but why not start with the easiest plural of all? Click here for the singular and here and here to make it a plural. Fun will follow. Trying to say Portuguese words, yeah, it can be hard, but why on earth would you start with that one? Start with normal words, why don't you? Okay, Portuguese pronunciation can be hard for English speakers. It has some difficult sounds like that infamous one hiding in the vowels. Know what it is? Let's see if you do. 
Meu bebê bebe somente água filtrada. Okay, alphabets aren't supposed to be hard, especially when they're basically the same as the one that we already know. But Portuguese does have some peculiarities, uh, like letters with weird little hats and tails and squiggles. What on earth are they? And are they hard to pronounce? In a nutshell, you do have to get them right, but you won't die doing it. So don't be scared. Just start practicing. Você bebe, you drink. You drink water. Você bebe... So the circumflex makes the sound more closed and abrupt. Easy. We have this word, and this is sabia. Sabia is the verb, the past of the verb to know. I knew, eu sabia, sabia. But then we have this word, and this word is wise, sabia. Yeah, so acute accents emphasize the vowel and just draw it out a bit. You might recognize this letter from one loan word in English that still bothers to use it. It's a mark in the shape of a hook, and you'll sometimes see it under the letter C. Uh, cedilha, under a Portuguese C, gives it more of a S sound. Interesting story. We got the word façade from French, but the cedilha originally came from Spanish. It evolved from the Visigothic letter for Z. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is, trust me. See, I'm giving you all these good reasons to learn languages using stories, because I know that stories make you remember. And now may I present the squiggle that you've been waiting for. Pains? Bye. Pains? <laughs> So Portuguese actually has two different types of vowel sounds. The sounds you make just with your mouth, and then a nasal, nasal right here, version of each. Spoiled kids, they make Maya, you know, mm, I don't want to death. This is like Maya, you know, Maya. But then we have this, manhã. This is morning. That's right. So whenever you see this wavy line over a vowel, you know you're going to have to do this. Mães. Mm, mm. This is kind of ridiculous, right? But okay, you have to try. Did you try it? I bet you tried it. Other complicated sounds are the LH and NH combinations. Ilha, this means island, or dinheiro, which means money. Are we forgetting anything? Ah, yes, you also have to roll your R's, depending on where in the Portuguese speaking world you are. You can't make that damn sound. You just can't make that damn sound. <laughs> It's hard to do, isn't it? So yes, there are sounds in Portuguese that don't exist in English, and the absolute best way to get used to them is to interact with Portuguese speakers and read as much as possible. And read as well, read and then listen to audio versions of the stuff that you're reading. Reading simple stories in Portuguese gives you real situations that all these tricky words are actually used in. Once I figured out how to use stories for learning languages, I just got addicted because I saw my levels just improve so fast and I started creating my own method for learning languages using stories, which I then appropriately call, I think it's a good name, I called it the story learning method because it does what it says on the tin. The thing is, when you learn a language this way, you're doing exactly what you did when you learned your native language, learning through stories. And trust me, your brain remembers this stuff very, very well. It is the most natural way to pick up Portuguese. And if you're keen to see how this method works, well, I've got something for you. It is a story learning kit. It's completely free. There's a link in the description. Go and check it out and download it now. Amar, beber, sorrir. See these endings? 99% of Portuguese verbs start off with one of these three endings. Verbs can get a little tricky in Portuguese. In English, we change some verb endings when we talk about the past, but Portuguese gives you a lot more verb endings, and it's not just for whether it's in the past, present, or future, but also depending on who's doing the action, for example. We take the infinitive, falar, we remove the ending, ar, we take the stem of the verb, fal, and we add the following endings. U, as, a, amos, ais, am, am. And once you've learned the formula for these standard verbs, you can feel safe trying out thousands of other ones that follow the exact same pattern. But I won't pretend it is perfectly straightforward. You see what's going on here? Once you have the right verb ending, the whole sentence has to agree. And Portuguese verbs, are, well, they're pretty moody. You can't just learn one way to talk about swimming. In fact, the average Portuguese verb has, wait for it, over 50 forms. That's more kinds of verb conjugation than Spanish, Italian, and French. 
it's not the easiest, but this is why reading works. Reading just shows you all of these things in context and helps you learn it much faster. The conjugations just become intuitive. See, it's not so scary after all, is it? Things are still heating up though, and Portuguese certainly wants to win that coveted uniqueness contest. See, no other Romance language has one rare feature in particular, except for Galician. Use the personal infinitive in sentences like It's important for me to study. In Portuguese? É importante eu estudar. The personal infinitive, ever heard of that? Well, this one's really easy. In certain situations where you're talking about yourself, you just use the base form of the verb without even conjugating it at all, which I actually, I really like it. I think it's very, very cool. And it's not even the only tense that Spanish, French, and Italian don't use either. But of course, you need to learn when to use these tenses. So you have a bit of work to do with Portuguese. And that's why I want to show you this fun part next. Se você quiser falar que alguma coisa é pequena em português, é só adicionar o inho depois de qualquer palavra. É a mesma coisa que colocar pequeno antes de uma palavra de inglês. So there's this rather cute thing that Portuguese has called diminutives. And trust me, Brazilians in particular use inho or the feminine inha a lot. It can be to show affection or pity or sarcasm or to emphasize something. Fogo, foguinho. Carro, carrinho. Sounds like fun? Well, it is, but there's no escaping the tricks. Look at these unexpected word endings here, a diminutive bit starting with a Z, not to mention these alternative endings. But don't worry, diminutives in Portuguese are a lot of fun, so just get stuck in. So what's your opinion so far? You want the honest truth? Okay, well, if you like languages from the easy group, easier group, then you're in luck. Our favorite experts at the Foreign Service Institute rank Portuguese as a level one language, the easiest group of all for us English speakers. It doesn't make it easy, it makes it easier than some languages like, I don't know, Cantonese or Arabic or Japanese. Um, so if you really want it, you will be speaking Portuguese before you know it. I've done it myself. One of my favorite languages at the time of my life. I love Brazil. And if you want to go all the way in Portuguese, well, come and stop by at the Story Learning website. We have a stunning Brazilian Portuguese course aimed at complete beginners learning through stories. You're going to love it. Link in the description. Uh, below, and you should also check out this video, which YouTube thinks you're really gonna like. <laughs>